But I want to talk today about what goes on in a young person's mind because we're seeing an increase in serious youth violence. Young people apparently have gone out of control. They're killing each other. They're little devils, they're little monsters. They should all be locked up for life. What is going on in society? We all know that society is a very violent place to live in. You only have to look in the news every single day to see that this whole system is, is built on violence. The system's built on violence. There it is, I'm going to say it. So if you have a system that's built on violence, you are going to get the trickle-down effect where young minds believe society is a violent place to live. And the reason I'm saying this today is because I want to get into the mind of young people. Um, so I'm going to use a process called problem, reaction, solution. I'll try and break this down for you. So first of all, there's a generalization that there is a problem with young people. Now, the amount of videos that are shared, the amount of images of young people on the floor with their guts spilling out, covered in blood, uh, the amount of talk on social media about youth violence, the, in fact, the, the amount of media that's covering this is part of the problem. This is what paints the illusion that all young people are into gangs, into knives, and into murder, and also into selling drugs, and also into making lots of money. The list goes on. This is all the information that is fed to us via media. Now, I've always said this, that YouTube is the devil's playground, because some of those people on there who are supposed to be influencers, who are young people's uh, peer group, are the very same people that are perpetuating the violence that our children are facing on the streets. And they should be held accountable for that. And I've always said it, and I'm going to say it again. Stations or, you know, media outlets like Capital Extra that play grime music, that play music which perpetuates violence, should be ended, full stop. And us as responsible adults who are looking for a solution should be going down the road of petitioning this. I don't know why we are not looking at this as a solution. Remember what I'm trying to tell you is this, whatever goes into the mind becomes the behavior. So let's look back at the problem. So the problem or the perceived problem is that out there on the street somewhere, and this is from the mind of a young person, out there on the street somewhere, there is a pending danger. There is an op. There is an area that you can't go into. There's a group of people that are looking for you because you go to a specific school or if you're caught in a specific road, there's a group of people that will be looking for you to kill you. Now imagine from a young person's perspective how that can become an illusion that turns into reality. So you have a problem which is painted everywhere. Social media, YouTube, influencers, selling this narrative over and over again to young people. So the average 13, 14 year old believes it's okay to carry a knife. So let's look at the reaction now to hearing all of this, to believing that out there in society, uh, it's, it's all about death, it's all about carnage, it's all about making money, it's all about disrespecting, it's all about abusing, it's all about all of those things. So let's look at the reaction having heard all of that behavior. Remember I said what goes into your head becomes your behavior. So the reaction now is, if that's how you believe society is outside your house, what do you do as a young person? You go possibly buy a knife, possibly buy the biggest knife that you can get hold of because you think the fear or the threat is as big as it's shown in the media. So you go out and buy a gun, a knife, uh, whatever it takes for you to hide or conceal that you can harm or protect yourself with. These are the things that are going on as part of the reaction response. And this is what young people firmly believe they need to do. There's an instant op. Because once the problem has been painted in the illusion, there's an instant op in the reaction. So you have a reaction where young people are getting ready for something. So you, this is where you have young people that I've never committed a crime before, believing that they need to commit crimes or they need to carry concealed weapons just as part of today's society. This is where it becomes complicated because, and remember I'm talking from a young person's point of view, so let's break it down. So you have problem, reaction, now you've got the solution from a young person's perspective. So the solution is what? 
So now that you've got the problem which has been painted, you've got the reaction, you now carry a knife, you're going to protect your, 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 your friends, you're going to protect your environment, you're going to look after your business. So the solution now is at any cost, you must protect yourself, whether that is going to prison, whether that is using your weapon on somebody, or whether that is selling drugs or getting involved in any criminal activity. And this is what the problem is, is that the illusion becomes the problem. So this is why I called it problem, reaction, solution from the perspective of a young person. Now, you all know my thoughts. You know that I firmly believe that the, the way it's getting into young people's heads is the problem. So unless we address the way it's getting into young people's heads, then we're going to be faced with an ever-increasing trend of serious youth violence. So the message I guess I'm trying to say today is this, is unless we address this as a problem, reaction, solution situation and start looking at the illusion of what the problem is. Look at who is influencing our children. Look at how that, um, that information gets into their head. Look at how their belief systems, their value systems are being smashed to pieces every single day. This is why you have a child who leaves a reasonably good household and goes out and joins a gang and commits a crime. Doesn't need money, doesn't need love, but goes out and commits a crime because he believes somewhere in there because he's been told that outside in society is a violent place so if you take anything from this message today just take this if you are a parent a carer a key worker uh, um, anybody that works with your grassroots worker anyone that works with children just think about problem reaction solutions so if you're talking to young people about what's really going on in the outside world Try and look at the problem and work backwards. Try and look at how that perception of that problem was planted in their heads. And I'll tell you what, you'll see the light bulb come on and you'll see their lives start changing.